Hey, Popcorn Kit Crew. Guess what tonight is? Tonight is Taco Tuesday. How are my kings and queens doing today? Have you affirmed yourself that you are the greatest? Yes, you are. You are the greatest, Miss V says to say it to yourself. Say it back. You're the greatest. No, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. No, you are the greatest. Speaking of the greatest, tonight we have a really great story. It's called Suki and the Mermaid. And this story is about a beautiful mermaid that lives deep in the ocean. She has long, beautiful hair made of seaweed. She has jewels of pearls and shells. And she becomes best friends with Suki. It's a beautiful story, and I think you're going to enjoy it. You ready to get started? Let's go. I'm so happy to share this story with you. It's a wonderful story. It's a fun story. Let's begin. A girl named Suki lived with her ma and steppa in a cabin with a sagging porch and a roof so rickety it let sunshine or rain in depending on the weather. Every morning at day clean, Suki would get up to sling her hoe at the weeds in the vegetable garden. If she stopped to fan herself, with her wide straw hat, her steppa would shout, Suki, don't you be skylarking. The girl's mother called her new husband Mr. Jones, but Suki had her own name for the bossy do-nothing man. As her hoe rose and fell, she began to sing this song. Mr. Hard Time, since you come, my ma don't like me and my work's never done. Mr. Hard Times won't do a lick. Just say work faster or whip you with a stick. Ooh. Look, while she's working so hard, look at what he's doing. Watching. He's watching Suki do all. Not nice. It's not nice. Let's keep One hot summer afternoon, when her steppa wasn't looking, Suki threw down her hoe and she took off, and she ran through the woods of pine and palmetto and mossy oak, past the dunes fringed with broom grass, to the beach of shining white sand. That was her secret hideaway. Mm. She sat down, pulled off her hat, and unwound the white kerchief from around her head. The sea breeze cooled her burning face while she wiggled her toes deep, deep, deep into the sand where it was wet and cold. She sang a little song she had heard from somewhere. Went like this. Thee, thee, down below, come to me, Mama Jo. And suddenly, a beautiful brown-skinned, black-eyed mermaid rose up from the water. And her hair was green as seaweed, and it hung down to the mermaid's waist. Sunlight sparked off her gold combs in her hair and the green scales off of her fish tails. She sounds beautiful. The girl was mighty frightened, but the mermaid said pleasantly, How do, my lady? You look so hot there in the sun. Come into the water and cool off. Y'all, if a mermaid popped out the ocean while you were just sitting there relaxing, what would you do? And then she asked her to come into the pool. Would you go? I don't know if I would. Would you go? Let me know. Would you go? No. Suki heard folks warn before. 
Then mermaids will catch you and pull you beneath the water. So she said, mm, no, missus, I can't swim. I'll teach you how to swim if you wish, the mermaid said. And then she added gently, you have no reason to fear me, my lady. I came because your song called me. But Suki would only wade along the water's edge while the mermaid dove under the waves and rose up again and dove again. And each time she came up, she would bring Suki a curious shell or red and white coral or bits of green and blue grass polished like jewels by the sea. When the sun began to set, Suki cried, Oh, I'm going to be whipped for sure. I clean forgot to feed the chickens and draw water from the river. She's scared she's going to get in trouble. Well, give this to your folks, said the mermaid, pressing a gold coin into Suki's hand. And they won't scold you, but you must promise not to tell them about me. When you want to see me again, just come here and sing. Thee, thee, down below, come to me, Mama Jo. And then Mama Jo disappeared beneath the waves. She's beautiful. She's not gonna hurt Suki. She wants to be her friend. Suki hurried home. At first, her ma and steppa yelled at her because she had not done her chores. But then she gave them the mermaid's coin. They stared in wonder. Where'd you get this? Her ma asked. On the water's edge, said Suki. Well, said her steppa. Go off tomorrow to the water's edge and see can you find some more of these. Okay, I will, Suki answered, happy to have more time to spend with her friend the mermaid. After this, Suki went to the shore every morning. When the day was clean, the mermaid taught her to swim and sometimes they dove through the water together. One day they just sat talking beside the waves. Soon I'm gonna leave this island and go over to the mainland, said Suki. I'll live in a fine place like Beaufort or Charleston. My home is below the sea, away from the world of men, said Mama Jo. And you can come and stay with me if you want. I don't think so, said Suki. Before she dove under the waves at the first dark, the mermaid would give Suki one small coin, and then this girl would give it to her folks so her ma and pa could buy some meat and rice and flannel. But Mr. Jones spent most of it on Malafi, which is whiskey, and that came by boat from the mainland. So things were not much better in that tumbled-down cabin. You see Suki giving the gold coin right here? She's handing it over, giving it to her parents. What's going through Mr. Jones's mind? What do you think? Can you guess what's going through his mind? I have an idea. Suki's ma grew more and more curious to know where her daughter find the gold coins. And one morning, she followed Suki to the shore. Hiding in the broom grass on the sand dune, she heard Suki singing the song. Thee, thee, down below, come to me, Mama Jo. And then, the mother watched in amazement as the girl and the mermaid swam in the ocean. And she saw the mermaid give Suki one gold coin at the day's end. 
That night, while Suki slept, her ma whispered to Mr. Jones about what she had seen. If I catch that merman, her husband said, I'll sell him on the main for a pile of gold. They have a plan. What they gonna do? They're discussing about what they're gonna do. So before day clean, as Suki was sleeping, her ma and steppa carried their canoe down to the shore. And there, the mother began to sing, Thee, thee, down below, come to me, Mama Jo. It's a trick, y'all. When the mermaid rose up from the water, Mr. Jones chased her in the canoe, and he flung his net at her. But the angry mermaid dove beneath the water. She did not come up again. Though Suki's ma began to sing the magic song over and over and over again. At last, the husband and wife gave up and they went home, each blaming the other for what had happened. They said nothing to Suki, who went to the shore as usual. Look how they're trying to catch, they're trying to catch Suki. But Suki outsmarted them. I'm sorry. See how they're trying to catch the mermaid. And Suki went to the shore, but the mermaid never came back. That mother and father, oh my goodness. But Mama Jo did not answer the girl's song that day or any other day. Suki grieved for her friend's loss because there was no more gold. Mr. Jones made her hold the garden, clean the house, and haul the water until she took sick. Soon she grew so weak that she could barely get out of bed. But in a dream, the mermaid visited her and said, I will come to you once more and take you to live with me beneath the sea. If you want this, go to the shore and sing. Thee, thee, down below. Take me down, Mama Jo. This is the mermaid visiting Suki in a dream. Suki wasn't feeling so good. She became sick. The mermaid began to miss her friend. Though she was very, very tired and sickly, Suki crept down to the shore while her, Ma, and Stepa were away. There she sang softly, Thee, thee, down below, take me down, Mama Jo. To her joy, the mermaid rose up and she wrapped strands of magical hair around Suki so the girl could travel all the way down safely beneath the waves. They plunged into the ocean and the mermaid carried Suki down, down, down through the water to her home in the sea well. Suki found herself in a vast dry cave. All around her were mother of pearl glowed and it was filled with a soft warm light. Mama Jo said, this is your home now. I will never scold you down here. For a while, Suki was happy the mermaid taught her sea songs and gave her strands of pearls and showed her a rusty chest filled with white gold and jewels from a sunken pirate ship. Suki was amazed and she shared riddles with her. But after some length of time, the girl began to pine for the sound of human voices and the mockingbird sweet songs of day for the scent of wild magnolias and jasmine, 
with a sky of delicious blue dotted with white clouds and seagulls. She pleaded with Mama Jo, do carry me back home, missus. At first the mermaid said no, but touched by Suki's tears, she said, very well. If you ask me a riddle I can't answer, I will take you home. So Suki's got to think of a riddle that the mermaid is not familiar with. Let's see how wise Suki is. Let's see what Suki comes up with. So Suki thought and thought and finally she said, there's something that walks all day and when night comes, she goes under the bed and she rests. What is it? Mama Jo thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with the answer to the riddle. That's a shoe, cried Suki. She had picked the riddle because the mermaid had no feet and Suki was always barefoot. Look at the two of them. They're just discussing things and having fun. So the mermaid said, I will carry you back to the land, said Mama Jo with a sigh. But time has passed in the world above while you have been with me. You are a grown woman now. Go to the pirate's chest and take a bag full of coins and jewels. This will be your dowry. When you return, many men will want to court you, but only marry the man named Dimbo. If you choose another husband, your treasure will disappear. Wow. Then the mermaid wrapped her mossy hair around Suki and brought her to the shore. The young woman returned to the rickety cabin where she found her ma and stepma. Suki's ma had grown old and grieving for her lost daughter. She embraced Suki with tears of joy. Mr. Jones had just grown meaner until he seemed only dry bones and bitterness. Seeing Suki's treasure, he pretended to welcome her home. He hid his face in his hands as though he were crying too. Oh my goodness. But he couldn't squeeze one salt tear from his eyes. Look, look at him. Pretending like he's happy. Look at him. Shame on him. When the story got around that the young woman had brought a rich dowry, all the young men came courting her, but Suki remembered what the mermaid said, and her warning was to refuse them all. Then one day, a hard-working fisherman rode across the mainland to court her. Name's Dimbo, he said simply. Suki studied his eyes and saw love and honesty and kindness in them. Though he was not as tall or as handsome as some of the other suitors, she was happy with the man the mermaid had chosen for her. Suki's ma and neighbors planned a fine wedding, but Mr. Jones had other plans. What was he planning? Let's see. I'm going to get that gold, he promised himself the night before the wedding while Suki and her ma were away. The wicked man struck Dimbo dead and stole the treasure and no one saw him do the deed. So he hid the bag under his mattress going to jail. He's, he's going to jail. I should have on a police hat instead of a taco hat. What is wrong with my stuff? Let's see what happens. 
When Suki discovered the crime, her grief was beyond measure. She ran to the seashore where she cried, Thee, thee, down below, come to me, Mama Joe. The mermaid appeared and Suki told her unhappy tale. Then Mama Joe said, This is the last time I will come to you. My lady, you must now choose forever between my world and the world of men. Think carefully. Below the sea is a gentle place without time or pain. Up here, hurt and hunger are never far away. And time is always ready to steal what little you have. But Suki said, I must have Dimbo. Do bring my sweetheart back to me, and I won't bother you after this. Mama Jo dropped a sea pearl in the young woman's palm. Set this on Dimbo's lips, she told Suki. Then with a sad goodbye, my lady, she vanished beneath the waves. See Suki in her wedding dress. Suki raced back to her cabin where Dimbo rested in a plain pine coffin. While her ma and other mourners looked on, she put the tiny pearl on Dimbo's closed lips. And right away, life came into him again. Sitting up, he pointed to Mr. Jones and cried, That's the one who hit me. But the wicked man snatched the treasure bag and fled to the shore pursued by Suki, Dimbo, and the others. Mr. Jones jumped into his canoe and paddled away, but everyone watched a single dark cloud form above the boat and lightning flashed, thunder roared, and the ocean beneath the cloud began to churn, and high waves swamped the canoe. In a moment, the angry water swallowed the boat and its passenger. See you later, stepdad. Suddenly, the sky cleared and the sea calmed. Though they were sorry to have lost the mermaid's treasure, Suki and Dimble were happy to have each other. They comforted Suki's ma, who said Mr. Jones wasn't much, but he was all I had in this world. You got us, ma, said Suki, giving her a hug. Well, we all be getting along just fine now. Okay. I wonder if the mermaid has something to do with that. Let's see. The next day, the wedding went ahead as planned. Afterward, Suki took Dimbo's hand and led him down to the shore. As the two sat on the beach, Suki wiggled her toes deep into the white sand and felt something hidden there. Together, they dug up the lost treasure bag. At that moment, Suki saw the flash of sunlight on green scales and gold combs far out in the sea. She blew a kiss to the waves and heard sweet laughter in return. That was Mama Jo. That was Mama Jo. And that is the end. Well, this story included love, it included family, it included friendship, it included jealousy, it included murder, but it also had a happy ending. Let me know if you like this story, and I also want to tell you all that um, even though sometimes we suffer, 
and we lose things in our lives, there's going to be a happy ending. I chose this story for a special reason, and I'm going to be sharing this with you later on. And I'm going to refer to this book so you can know why I shared this story. It has personal meaning to me. Okay, Popcorn Kid Crew, I love you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace out. Peace and love. Talk to you later.